Good afternoon and welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center for our crew news conference today. I am joined in studio to my left by Crew 8 Commander Matt Dominic, Crew 8 Pilot Mike Barrett, Crew 8 Mission Specialist Jeanette Epps, Crew 8 Mission Specialist Alexander Grabankin, and Soyuz MS-25 Flight Engineer Tracy Dyson. We will be taking some questions from here in the room and through our phone bridge, but before we get started, we will open it up with some opening remarks. Mike, take it away. Thanks very much, Courtney. Uh, first of all, it's it's a real pleasure and a great honor for us to be here, both as a crew, as uh, some of you know, we kind of enjoy being together, uh, but also with y'all. Uh, this traditionally marks an inflection point in our preparation for spaceflight, where we have finished a really brisk training flow, a very busy one, uh, and now are deemed spaceflight ready. And it gives us a chance to pause and to think about all the people, the large community that helped get us and our spaceships ready to go. Uh, it also makes us think about the, the responsibility, the very serious responsibility of running the International Space Station, which the world has built. We accept that responsibility with humility and respect. We will carry a lot of our community with us when we get up there, and we are really looking forward to our respective launches on the uh, Dragon and the Soyuz. So w welcome, we would like to welcome you as well. Uh, it is not lost on us that today is the day of remembrance. Um, we really thank NASA for keeping this tradition going. This is a chance for us to honor our fallen space brothers and sisters. Uh, and to really reflect on the purpose of the exploration effort. And it also gives us a chance to affirm that purpose and to muddle forward with determination, with ferocity, with, with, uh, with real seriousness. But we do it in a way that relentlessly identifies these risks and manages them to the best uh, that we can. And keeping this day of remembrance ensures that that mindset is baked into NASA's DNA in everything we do. So I thank the agency for keeping this day sacred to us. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, open it up to the floor, and um, we are here for you. All right, thank you, Mike. We will start with our first question on the phone bridge from Marsha Dunn with Associated Press. Hi, I'm hoping you could hear me. Um, for Jeanette, <laughs> you should have flown years ago on a Soyuz, then you got assigned to a Starliner, now a Dragon. Did you ever think you might never fly? Um, and how did you keep your morale up through all this and, and manage to per persevere to be here today? Thank you. Well, it, it's, it has been a number of years, but um, uh, I am, I was confident that I would fly. And the way that I kept, um, um, I guess, spirits up, you could say, was, you know, we continue to train weekly, daily. We train vigorously for any mission that we're assigned to. So I've been pretty busy over the last few years still training still working towards the goal of going to the space station. And, you know, unfortunately, Boeing, um, I am not flying on Boeing, but I think that NASA felt that it would be um, more expedient to get me on a SpaceX and get flight experience. And then we'll see what happens in the future. Okay, we'll take our next question right here. Oh, thank you, Mark Caro with Aviation Week and Space Technology. Um, I, I don't know if you have any spacewalks planned, but, you know, that's always drama and something uh, to, to deal with. But maybe you could kind of summarize that, or if not, uh, maybe there's some other maintenance uh, thing on your agenda that you really want to take care of and put some focus on. Thank you. Well, I can start that a little bit. Every crew launches spacewalk ready. Um, you never know when something is going to cough up a fur ball on the outside of the station you might need to go out and fix. Uh, but more recently, uh, we've had some EVA content added to our mission, most likely. It's still being defined, uh, but that's been a flurry of activity for a lot of us in these last very few weeks. Uh, that is one of the things that makes spaceflight wonderful <laughs> to us, visiting vehicles and spacewalks. And you may know that uh, NASA has scheduled a solar eclipse during our increment as well. <laughs> um, so uh, things like this really make spaceflight quite wonderful. But we're looking forward to those EVAs. We're looking forward to getting ready for them. Okay, our next question on our phone bridge from Bill Harwood with CBS News. Uh, this is for Jeanette. Uh, you know, you, you, you were one of the most thoroughly cross-trained astronauts in the Corps. Um, I'm not asking you to play favorites, but maybe give us some impressions of uh, what you think of the Crew Dragon, realizing you hadn't flown in it yet, of course, uh, maybe compared to Soyuz and, and Starliner. Thanks. Well, I, I would start out by saying that any space capsule that we can take to space is amazing. <laughs> 
So all vehicles, they are different, but they all serve the same purpose to get us to our International Space Station. Um, I would say that each one has their advantages. Um, you know, SpaceX is probably a little bit more spacious. Um, the Soyuz has um, different types of suits that, um, you know, just everything is, each vehicle has different aspects that I like. So um, either one, um, Soyuz or SpaceX or even Boeing, I'd be happy to take to the International Space Station. Okay, our next question is here in the room. Go ahead. Yes, hi, uh, Will Robinson Smith with Space Flight Now. Thanks for answering some of our questions. We could go down the line. Uh, if you would describe a personal memento, something special that you're planning to bring up to station and why you happened to choose that. Thanks. Oh man, we, uh, we're, we're in a unique position where we actually get to take quite a few things. And so they kind of call it, fall into two categories. Um, my first category for me was, was thank yous, was stuff that you take uh, as a thank you to the folks that helped get you here, right? That's, that's friends, that's family, that's uh, the mentors that just kind of popped into your life at the right time and, and said the right thing that set you on a new course. And so uh, I'm here today because of those folks and I'm flying a few things which I'll probably bring up later or, or just, you know, those would be secrets for later. Uh, but, and then also things for family, right? And for me, one of those items uh, is a, a really important part of my childhood was uh, time, fuel, distance, which came to help me later in life. Uh, my dad bought uh, one of the watches that went to Apollo in 1970, and he, he gave that to me uh, a few years ago. And I, as a kid, I remember we would go on these long road trips, and I would very precisely time the moment between mile markers and sit out there with the Rand McNally Atlas and timing the distances before GPS, you know, and <laughs> maps. And so I would provide that time fuel distance. We've got half a tank. We've got this many miles. And so now that watch is going to space station. It's going to orbit the Earth for me, and maybe I'll time a few things with it. Keep going down the line. Mike, go ahead. Uh, well, I mean, the coolest thing I'm taking to space is these guys, honestly. <laughs> um, you know, this is my third flight, and uh, the academic institutions that helped set me on my path, I've flown things for them in previous flights. Uh, but like Matt, uh, people who have helped, helped build me, helped inspire me, I'm taking mementos for them. And probably the most precious things are just photos of my family. Yes, hardcore photos. Hard photos uh, rather than just digital. Down the line, um, for me, um, one of the most special things that I'm taking with me is a photo of my mom. Um, I was selected in June 2009, and five days after I was selected, my mom passed away. But I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her and her work ethic, and her um, emphasis on education growing up. So she was a big part of the reason that I'm here. So that's one of um, the most special things that I'm taking with me. Я с собой на борт решил взять также фотографии. Это, конечно же, будут из семейного архива. So uh, I decided to take with me some uh, photos from family archive. Также есть и часы и еще кое-какие вещи, которые так или иначе бы мне напоминали его моей малой родине и о моих каких-то предпочтениях вообще по жизни. And I will also take a watch and uh, some things that uh, remind me of the place where I was born and uh, things that uh, remind me of uh, some precious moments in my family. Да, ну и некоторые вещи, конечно, там будут, которые мне будут необходимы для проведения каких-то определенных, может быть, экспериментов. Но это уже более такая тема, которую не стоит для данного мероприятия. Uh, and I will also take some things or I should say mechanisms that uh, I would use to perform some experiments and uh, scientific activities, but uh, this is a different topic. Okay, Tracy. I think um, for me the most unique thing that I'm taking is a journal. And that journal flew with me on my previous mission on um, uh, Expedition 2324. And in that journal, I made uh, lots of notes about what was going on and what surprised me, and uh, most notably uh, the day to day um, activities surrounding the EVAs that I did. And since then, I had been filling it with reminders to myself um, when I had the clarity of uh, mind and um, 
wanted to remember these things when I was up in space. And it's also filled with letters and pictures uh, from family and close friends. And so I think that's about the only um, real unique thing that I'm taking uh, with me in space. Traveling light. <laughs> Okay, our next question comes from social media. The Crew 8 patch is the coolest. How was it designed? <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> Matt, this is a good one for you. <laughs> uh, I, I appreciate it. It was a team effort. It took some time. Uh, I'm a, a system engineer and thus wrote a very general requirements and passed them on to a great artist who was able to put it, help us put it together. Uh, very simple in nature. We, you know, One of the requirements is that a central element of the patch uh, shall be removable for like simple logos. Uh, and so, you know, other, other various requirements to put together. Uh, another aspect of the patch is it's really about the team and the international effort. And the patch looks down upon the earth uh, from the north so that we could capture a view of the earth that showed where all of us are from. So we capture Siberia and the parts of the United States uh, where we are from uh, just to show that this is, this is one team moving humanity forward. But other than that, it's pretty simple. The eight is, the eight is clear. <laughs> <laughs> okay, our next question is from the phone bridge, Robert Perlman. Thank you. Um, you. There was mention of the solar eclipse, and I know last time that we had an eclipse pass over the continental U.S., there was a concerted effort aboard the space station to photograph it and document it. I'm wondering as, um, if there has been any talk of special training or special cameras to take up or how you're preparing for that event in April. So that is uh, still being defined. Um, we learned a lot with this last solar eclipse, and uh, there have been several, actually, that we've been able to photograph from both the Mir Station and the International Space Station. The big difference now is the, the camera complement that we have. The imagery will be, I think, much more crisp, and, and much uh, we have much more capable uh, cameras on board. So um, we are still waiting for that. I guarantee you that they will be fine-tuning that plan until the, the day before the eclipse. Uh, but we will stand ready on our very unique platform to capture it the best we can. Okay, our next question is from the phone bridge from David Curley. Thank you very much. Uh, Tracy, I don't want to invade your privacy, but you talked about your journal. Um, I think it's interesting for an astronaut who's been in space, has come back and contemplated it, and is going back what specifically you'll be thinking about on this mission. Thank you. Oh, wow. I don't know how to put that into a nutshell. Um, I think that um, looking back on the mission that I had before, it was my first long duration mission. And I was so focused on uh, the tasks that I knew that I had ahead of me. And um, I, I think that um, looking back on that, I, um, there's a lot of personal growth that happens when you live in space for six months um, and uh, with all your other personal life uh, on the earth happening at the same time. I was uh, newly married and my husband was uh, in the military, deployed on a ship, and um, my parents are, were um, living in California and um, going through uh, life and um, I just wasn't uh, um, ready to uh, divide my attention between all three uh, activities. And um, I think this time I'm going with a little bit more clarity on um, who's at home and, and my husband's not on a ship anymore. <laughs> and um, he's at home uh, helping to take care of our family. And, um, and so, yeah, just without going into too much personal life, um, my, art, my journal is just full of uh, reminders of my faith and um, who I serve, it's not myself, it's, um, it's God and it's uh, my crewmates, it's this International Space Station and all of the hundreds of thousands of people on the ground that are invested in it. Okay, our next question is from Gabriel on Instagram. What experiments will you be conducting in space? There, there are so many experiments uh, we do. We have multiple centers, we've traveled all over the world, setting up to operate experiments. Um, when people ask, what is it you, what is it you do, uh, I try to boil it down to something simple. I'm a mechanic, right? I've got to fix the space station when it breaks, and I'm a lab technician. And then third, I'm, you know, I'm part of the experiment. I think the most, experiment, most important experiment we're doing as we move humanity forward uh, into the solar system is getting 
getting more statistical significance to all of the experiments we've done. So I view myself as, you know, and statistically we refer to the number of samples as n. I refer to myself as another n, right? And each n we get into orbit uh, helps us move science forward. Uh, an example of one experiment uh, that I'm involved in uh, from the medical side is uh, I won't be using the treadmill on orbit. Uh, we have a treadmill, we have a bike, and we have a, a weightlifting device on the space station. And it, to me, uh, you know, a treadmill takes up a lot of space, and flying in space, uh, having a mass is a penalty that you have to lift off with fuel and move around uh, wherever you're going. And so a treadmill takes up a lot of space, and there's a hypothesis out there that maybe we could do without a treadmill and only use other, uh, other devices and still not have uh, pretty heavily. And we have a motto there, which is good medicine in bad places. Um, I fully subscribe to that motto, but I've taken it a, a step further. Good food in bad places. Uh, I love to cook. I'm the main cook at home. I have been for many years. That included raising my five children, uh, and I taught them all how to cook. Uh, cooking makes me feel human. It uh, is a way to be creative. It's a forcing function to put things together and satisfy yourself and, and minister to people that you love at the end of the day. Uh, for me, I am also a sailing freak. Um, making good food on a boat uh, is something I've tried to do for a long, long time. Uh, and if I can take a really nice piece of tender beef uh, to the top of a mountain and, and cook it and make it taste good, that, that fulfills me big time. We unfortunately don't get to cook that much on station. Um, no open flames. Um, we don't even have a microwave. But I can tell you that uh, there's still a lot of creativity to be had by mixing pouches and freeze-dried <laughs> foods together. Um, so we will do that to the extent that we can. And when we get fresh food up there, that, that ups our game a little bit. So uh, unusual tacos. Uh, a lot of us have front-loaded our game with um, special foods that are coming up for us. Um, so um, as much as possible with freeze-dried food, canned food, and military rations, we're going to be creative. Okay, and Joey on Instagram asks if there are any personal milestones that you will be achieving during the mission. Go into space. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will rack up a year in space. That's what I'm, I'm looking forward to, and you probably will too. Right? Oh, we mean in cumulative time? Cumulative time, yeah. <clears throat> yes. We hope not in I was gonna uh, say, single mission. <laughs> <laughs> What's your plan? <laughs> um, I hadn't really thought about that. No. Um, my goodness. Yeah. All right. Well, it looks like we have another question in the room. Go ahead. Yeah, well, Robinson Smith, Space Flight Now. Thanks for letting me take another one. Um, question, I suppose, just for Expedition 71, since y'all are, are training together, have been. Uh, do you have a specific memory of a crew bonding experience that really sticks out in your mind for getting ready for your next mission? Thanks. Alexander, you want to yeah. consider? Я думаю, что рождение экипажа как полноценного единого целого, оно не сиюмоментно происходит, а это довольно-таки длительный процесс. So I think being born as a crew, uh, it doesn't happen uh, in a single moment. It's a, it's kind of a process. За время подготовки экипажу предстоит пройти огромное количество различных испытаний, тренировок. And uh, during the training uh, course, uh, the crew passes a lot of tests and exams. И наступает в один момент, наступает, точнее сказать, такой момент, когда ты понимаешь, что ты прекрасно знаешь, когда и в какой момент какой член экипажа как себя поведет. At one point, you're starting to understand when, at which point, each of the crew members, what they will do at this moment. И в этот самый момент ты понимаешь, что ты уже не просто как один работник, который выполняет определенные функции согласно предписанным там процедурам и так далее. And at this point, uh, you don't feel yourself uh, like. Uh, uh, a worker that performs a procedure or certain actions prescribed before. И вот именно, наверное, в этот момент ты понимаешь, что в этот в этот момент рождается уже экипаж, это как единое целый организм, который способен противостоять любым моментам и работать вместе. And at this point, you understand that a crew was born uh, as uh, a whole. Uh, organism uh, able to withstand any challenges and or difficulties. 
Ну и, конечно же, наступает момент, когда ты абсолютно полностью доверяешь э, своим э, соэкипажникам, своим, всем членам экипажа, и э, это очень хорошо сказывается и на атмосфере внутри экипажа, и на общих э, вещах, которые мы должны делать вместе. Uh, and at what point you understand that you trust all uh, and each and every one of your crewmates and uh, you are uh, able to achieve a lot uh, together? I can add to myself that I totally know and I'm sure that I got a very good equipage. And, and just for, my, for myself personally, I'm confident that I'm getting the best possible crew. All right, well, that's a great note to end on, and that is all of the questions that we have for today. Thank you all for joining through our various platforms today to ask questions. We'll see you next time.